because I'm a Londoner that I love London so Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner Here we are, just outside Faversham, in the heart of the hot-picking country, Eddie. Here um, we are. <laughs> here we are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here the two of us. And we've come here basically because this was where we used to come as a family in the 50s and the 60s. Um, and we were still coming here up to the late 60s when mechanisation sort of kicked in. So Eddie's family would be, his grandparents used to come, my mum and my dad used to come. And we're here by, I think, probably the last remaining huts in the centre. Uh, and, and there'd be huts behind as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, in fact, these are, I think, probably bigger than what we had. Uh, we would probably only add, our hut would be perhaps two thirds of this size. Um, pretty well taken up by the bed. I mean, there would be a big wooden bed in half of it and um, the, all the family would sleep in the bed. So, uh, but they is where, that is where people used to sleep. They would cook outside in, in fires dotted around. It's almost like a third world existence, isn't it? But for the open cooking. Yeah. It's wonderful sleeping accommodations. It's uh, rough. Pretty, pretty basic, which I think it was largely why it was, uh, I suppose, in those days, locally, it would be seen as immigrant labor, wasn't it? The day would start around seven o'clock in the morning. We'd pick through to around five, and then we'd return to the huts for the for the evening meal. No, oh, it was it was, it was a job one never really, really paid. Not for the time you put no, in there. No, but no, I couldn't tell you really what they used to uh, no. pay. The whole area at one time was full of hops. Um, Faversham itself was uh, really full of hop pickers. But you can imagine that the hops in uh, bunches of four, the roots uh, are here. And uh, in, uh, in about February time, uh, the farm workers would put four strings up to the wires at the top here. I guess we're talking this being about five, five meters in height, five, six meters probably. Uh, to come August, this field would actually be absolutely full of hops. Um, it wouldn't have this open aspect uh, you see today. Um, there'd be a tractor width apart so the tractors could, could get down. Um, and in August the hop pickers would come down, they would pull the binds themselves. So, so it was largely uh, a female workforce. The women were tough, uh, they would uh, have the strength to pull the binds. The male would come round on stilts and he would pick off the hops that were left up on the wires. Uh, they would pick their hops in baskets, they would have a tractor with a trailer attached and uh, a crow's nest and hook the hops onto a trailer and the hops used to come in at the far end of the machine um, and then the hops would go through the machine, the waste products would be spewed out on, on th that side there and the hops and the leaves would come out this end. There'd be a conveyor belt here and the women's job, there were about six women working in the machine would be to pick out the leaves um, and then the hops would go into sacks and back off to the oast house. I would be brought here every day by the farm manager in the Land Rover and this is where the hops are baked. So from the fields um, the, um, the hops would be picked, put in sacks, brought here, um, moved up to the upper decks of the oast house through this um, uh, platform here. And uh, the oast house is, as I said, a very big oven. They would be baked overnight, and in the morning we would go in and put the hops from the upper floor into pokes, and they would then go off to London or, or, or to hop brokers. Very vibrant child of memories of uh, queues around here, people queuing for their money. Um, of course, most of the money had already been spent in the local pubs. So Right, we've now moved on to what was the King's Arms pub. As you can see now, it's a, a domestic residence and this really was the, uh, the centre of the nightlife of the hop fields. This pub would be absolutely jam-packed on a Friday and Saturday night, uh, full of hop pickers. And, and my mother, who played the piano, 
I say played the piano, she used to uh, do a thing called vamping, uh, vamp with the, the left hand and play the uh, tune with the right hand. My mum would go into the back room here, there'd be an old fashioned upright piano. Uh, and my aunt Lil, who was uh, uh, probably a bit limited on singing technique, but made up for that with uh, masses of charisma and personality. They would be a double act in the back room. Mum would have a fag on the go, cherry brandies lined up and play the piano. Uh, he invariably vanished, uh, my dad. He vanished about midday for a couple of hours off to the local pub in that direction uh, with his, uh, his best mate, Uncle Elf. Um, and they would come back about half past two, worse for wear, and crash down on the spent binds. A particular song called The Farmer's Boy uh, that had very decent lyrics, but by the time they finished with them, they became a uh, fairly indecent set of lyrics. That would be jam-packed in the back room there. We as kids would be balanced on the window ledge, looking in, trying to see the action. Uh, in those days, kids weren't allowed in pubs. Um, and this would go on throughout a Saturday night. What about your view of, of Londoners? Did they upset your... Uh, Never Your upset. quietness? Never upset me. No, You're being no. very diplomatic. Come on. <laughs> no, 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 no. I used to get on very well, most of them. Yeah. I well. knew most, quite a few of them, because they used to come down year after year, you know. Yeah, yeah. Life did change. I think the local economy had changed fundamentally, really. You see the pub's now gone. Pub's gone, and there was a local shop here. And when mechanisation came, um, the shop closed. And I think generally there was a, a, a sort of a slightly depressed air about uh, about the fields. Only one off garden up here now, anyway. Yeah. This one, I was just telling your mate here. This one's been redundant for one of must be four or five years. Oh now. right, yeah. But I like the way that the pub is such an important part of all this story. And I love what you said about Dad and Alf going down for two and a half hours, drink, coming back, yeah. crashing out somewhere over there, having yeah. a kip. Yeah. And, and they still, well, obviously they didn't have the same flexibility once it was mechanised, but I think most evenings were spent, spent down the pub. Um, and of course, it's still, I mean, it's still an active op field and an active machine. Um, I think it's largely, it's still immigrant labour instead of it being immig immigrant labour from London. It's now uh, immigrant labour, probably from largely Eastern European. But it's still active down here, the machines work and the Osthouses work. But that sort of uh, romance about it, I think, has, has probably gone now.